Hey guys, okay, uh, today I'm here with some confusing topic of physiology that is a neural regulation of respiration. This respiration uh, cannot happen on its own, right? It has to be regulated definitely in different conditions like hypoxia, apnea, dyspnea, and some um, scuba diving. So all this time, this has to be regulated. How it is happening? So let us see today how so it is happening. This neural regulation now uh, happens by two methods. One is by autonomic nervous system and second by the voluntary control. Second by the voluntary control. Voluntary control. For voluntary control, the center is present in the cerebral cortex. And for autonomic nervous system, we know autonomic nervous system, the centers are present in medulla and pons. So this is called medullary pontine respiratory center. So autonomic nervous system is under the medullary pontine respiratory center and for this voluntary control, the center is present in the cerebral cortex. Now, inside this medulla also, we find this respiratory centers. They are called medullary respiratory centers. Namely, they include um, VRG and DRG. What is VRG, DRG? DRG is a dorsal respiratory group and VRG is a ventral respiratory group and Pons Varoli, it includes two respiratory groups namely the pneumotoxic center and apneustic center. As the name suggests, this uh, ventral respiratory group is present on the ventrolateral aspect of the medulla oblongata and this will be having I neurons plus E neurons. These I neurons, E neurons are nothing but the neurons which promote the respective function. This I neuron causes inspiration, E neuron causes expiration. As this uh, ventral respiratory group has both I neurons and E neurons, it uh, helps uh, for both inspiration and expiration. It is present in the nucleus of ambiguous ambiguous and it is extended along the length of medulla like this it is extended like this and coming to this dorsal respiratory group this dorsal respiratory group will be having only the eye neurons only eye neurons and it is present dorsally as the name suggests, in the um, nucleus tractus solitarius, nucleus tractus solitarius, it will be not like uh, this VRG like expanded structure, it is just a normal center. And now coming to the apneustic center, pneumotoxic center, there is no perfect uh, function of this pneumotoxic center, uh, actually the main function of it is, it inhibits the apneustic center and this apneustic center main function is it prolongs the inspiration it prolongs the inspiration so how this um, centers are arranged in the pons if you consider this as a pons and um, on the upper part you find <coughs> On the upper part, you find the pneumotoxic center and in the lower part, you find the apneustic center. I have told you this uh, ventral respiratory group is an elongated structure like this. It will be having a rostral part and uh, <coughs> I'm sorry and a caudal part and the middle part. It will be totally having the three regions. Let us see all of that in detail. So consider this as a ventral respiratory group, a rostral part, rostral or nothing but the upper or also called the cranial and this is the intermediate part or the middle region and this is the caudal region and this is a caudal region. So what all these respective regions are they different or what do they do? Let's see now. This rostral or the cranial part, it help in uh, expiration. It do not cause expiration. It help in the expiration which is performed by the caudal region. So let me come from the bottom. This caudal region, intermediate region or middle region and the rostral region. This caudal region will be performing expiration. It will be helping in expiratory function by innovating the expiratory muscles. And now this intermediate part, it causes inspiration. Do not only causes inspiration, but also increases the caliber of inspiration by um, 
acting upon the muscles of the upper respiratory tract upper respiratory tract in the sense pharynx larynx it act even upon that by innervates them innervate these muscles and also increases the caliber of inspiration now finally coming to the rostral part it is given actual an important name called the bodzinger complex bodzinger complex it will help in expiration that is performed by the caudal region so it will help in expiration that is performing by the caudal region this is the uh, ventral respiratory group now i have told you about this apneustic center and pneumotoxic center also now uh, let me tell you about a uh, small clinical aspect regarding this whenever there is a suprapontine lesion what that supra pontine lesion oh, what do you mean by the supra pontine the names are supra up pontine pons so pons above the pons region whenever there is a lesion like means of injury what happens it do not actually affect the respiratory rhythm there will be no effect on the respiratory rhythm but because why so why so there is no response though on the above the pons we have um, what do you say this uh, medulla in the medulla we have drg vrg so why why so it's not affecting this is because the centers present above this pons region do not influence the respiratory rhythm very important point to be noted so you might get a continuation question in some examinations like um, they'll ask about this uh, drg or we are and on continuation what happens in the suprapontine lesions which is nothing but it do not affect the respiratory rhythm because the respiratory rhythm is independent on the centers present above the pons that is in the medulla okay this is all about the neural regulation it's just an intro uh, i'll be still making videos regarding this neural regulation please checking please keep checking out okay guys thank you for watching my video if you like my video please do share with your friends and don't forget to subscribe thank you